Hi guys, we are in week nine. All right, so just really quickly wanted to give you your video for this week. Um, first and foremost, it was fantastic meeting with you all again. Um, I feel like we made a lot of progress in our group meetings in terms of um, refining that topic proposal. Um, everything um, that we talked about has been updated and posted in your group pages. So please make sure that you are checking out, um, especially if you missed your group meeting, um, check out that feedback and then touch base with your group, of course, um, to make sure that we are all up to date. Um, but really excited to see that these projects are starting to um, take form. So thanks again for making that time. Um, we, as I said in the meetings, we'll, we'll be meeting again um, within the next couple of weeks um, to continue to, you know, solidify and develop these projects, but I'm feeling really good about where we're at. So um, for week nine, um, we don't actually have um, anything do this um, week except for your inquisitives and then um, there is an extra credit assignment that is due on Sunday um, as well if you choose to do it um, but lab 7 and your introduction which I'm going to go through today um, isn't technically due until after um, spring break so we actually have quite some time before it's due. I believe it's due on April 4th, um, but I wanted to make it available for you this week so that you have a lot of time um, to work on these two um, very important assignments. So lab seven is essentially developing your survey and then um, your introduction is your introduction, which is the first major section of your paper. Okay. Um, so uh, for this week, week nine, uh, make sure you are reading through chapter seven and you're going through the lecture slides. Um, go through those supplemental interactives, videos, etc. Um, and then start taking a look um, at lab seven and um, your introduction with your groups. So I want to jump to lab seven really quickly so we can walk through that. Um, so this is designing your surveys. Okay, so this is an extremely important part of your project because uh, these are the questions that you're going to be asking your participants. So this is where we're going to be uh, designing the materials uh, and surveys for preparation for entering your survey items into Qualtrics. So I'm going to be entering them into Qualtrics, um, but you need to prepare them um, so that I can enter them for you. Um, so what you need to do for this lab is make it very, very clear. And again, our meetings last week should have helped you solidify all of this, but make it very clear. Um, what is the title of your experiment? Now, your experiment wants to be titled something different than your paper because we don't want our participants to know what we're actually studying. Okay, so if we're studying something that's looking specifically at like gender stereotypes and we're using, um, you know, different uh, images of a person or different professions of a person, we want to um, title the study maybe something related to professions, right? Instead of specifically about gender stereotypes so that the participants don't know what it is that the study is about and therefore um, you know their answers are not being kind of compromised by that knowledge um, what is your hypothesis so we need to know what your specific hypothesis or hypotheses are if you have more than one um, which you might have if you have more than one independent variable um, what is your independent variable or what are your independent variables so what are you manipulating what are your levels so what are the groups um, of your independent variable um, how will you manipulate your independent variable? Are you going to show a picture? Are you going to have a short story, a video? Um, I think we talked through this as well in our groups. Um, so everybody should be kind of clear on how it is you're going to be um, presenting your stimulus, um, your scenario. Um, and then what is your dependent variable? Um, and you should have at least two 
uh, because you should have two levels of your independent variable. Um, so what are you measuring? Um, please make sure that your survey um, with your manipulation at the top um, has no more than 10 Likert scale questions. And you're going to see at the bottom of this a sample. I'll go through in just a minute. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, uh, for the sake of um, um, not having so much data to collect and to analyze, you really want to limit your survey to 10 questions. Now, this is based on having one independent variable. Some of you have toyed with the idea of going with a second independent variable. And if you choose to do that, then you would have 10 more questions for that second independent variable. Okay. Um, but please make sure that you are um, mindful of the extra work that comes with that. Okay, um, and then you're going to include a short demographic survey at the end of your survey as well. Um, you can use the one that I've provided if you want, um, or you can modify it, um, but you should have at least um, these demographics included. Some of you are going to include other demographic questions because that's how you're going to be addressing some of your independent variables. Um, so this is where you would include that. And those of you who are should know what I'm talking about. Um, these are questions that are just like a simple like yes or no, not a Likert scale questions or a simple just identifying of a specific variable. Um, so for example, one of you is interested in whether your participants are participating in any extracurricular activities and you're going to specify to choose from. So sort of similar to what is your ethnicity, you're going to say something like, um, please circle which extracurricular activities you are engaging in, if any. So that would be included in your demographic portion, okay? Those are not part of the Likert scale survey questions. Um, okay, so um, here is an example. I told some of you that I would give you an example of a story um, because several of you have decided that you're going to use a story or a scenario um, to act as your stimulus. So here is an example um, of a story with a manipulation okay so we have two groups we have one independent variable and we have two levels of that independent variable so in this um, manipulation basically the study is looking at um, how influential um, confidence is on perceived attractiveness and friendliness okay so this study is trying to find out you know are people who are um, confident perceived as being more attractive and being more friendly um, than people who are perceived as not confident. So group A gives you a scenario of um, the confident individual and then group B gives you the scenario of the not so confident individual. And then these are the questions that everybody is asked. So regardless of which group they are in, which would indicate which scenario they read, either A or B, um, they all have the same questions. So uh, for example, um, we might include something like good music is important to a party, strongly disagree or strongly agree, and then participants will choose one through five. Um, Jennifer is an attractive woman. Confidence is important when making friends. The amount of people at a party is important. So in this um, description of the experiment, the participants are being told that they're participating in a study about parties. Um, and so we include some questions about parties, but these questions are actually going to be thrown out. We're not really even going to look at them. We're really going to be focusing more on the um, is an attractive person, confidence is important when making friends. Um, uh, I would be likely to become friends with Jennifer. Um, I would not attend the party. Um, and uh, what else? I would be likely to attend Jennifer's party. I would like to get to know Jennifer more. These are the questions that we would be running our data analysis on to see if there's any significant differences between the group that got 
an image of a confident Jennifer compared to a group that got the image of a not confident Jennifer. Okay. So we want to include some questions, just a couple, maybe like two to three max that are kind of just there to sell the story of, yeah, this study is about parties, right? Um, and then the rest of our questions should be aimed at finding the answers to our uh, hypothesis, okay? Um, so um, this is essentially it for lab six. You're going to, sorry, lab seven. Um, you're basically just developing your survey. You're developing those questions. And hopefully chapter six gave you a good foundation. Um, hopefully our meetings helped you to understand what kinds of questions we want to be developing. But if you are still struggling and not sure, um, feel free to reach out. Also remember that what you submit here is not the end all be all. I'm going to be going through all of these questions and um, giving you feedback and helping you to um, revise them if necessary. Okay. So don't stress out if um, you submit a question that I'm like, mm, maybe we need to change that. That's totally okay. And in fact, I expect it. That's why you're taking this class. Okay. So that is lab seven. Um, let's jump back to um, the introduction. Okay, so we talked a lot about this in our meetings as well, okay? Um, but this is essentially your rough draft of your intro. And the introduction section, um, again, should be written in APA format, so make sure that you're referring to your textbook um, and the APA lecture slides um, uh, and the how to write an APA style paper file. Um, when you are submitting the introduction, your group will include your revised title page and references as well. So um, the revisions that I suggested, if I suggested any, and then also any new articles that you've come up with. So any new um, journal articles that you found um, that you feel are more appropriate, um, you want to make sure you're updating your um, references page to include those. Okay. Um, so you should have one, a brief overview of the problem or issue being studied. So this is where we're talking about, um, you know, what is it that you specifically are interested in studying? And then we have the literature review that talks about the literature that's already out there on this topic. Now here is where you're presenting us with that information that is going to um, support the purpose of the study. Why? Why are we doing this? Why why study this? Um, why look at this? Why do a research project on this? Okay, so introduce your problem, introduce what it is that you are particularly interested in studying, and then give us the information about research that already exists on the topic that is in support of, you know, why we should continue to study this or why we should be studying this in the particular way that you are choosing to study it. And then also make sure that you're including your hypothesis um, and remember to support your hypothesis with research as well. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of different um, sections here. So the overview, um, a little more detail uh, about what goes in there, um, literature review, a um, little more detail about what goes in there, and then um, make sure that when you're writing the literature review, the way you connect paragraphs and articles, regardless of the method you choose, has to make sense. So you want to take the reader through a coherent structure. Okay, so think of it as like telling a story. You're basically telling us the story of the literature that exists, and you're telling us why um, this research has been conducted, why it should be conducted, um, and why you're choosing to conduct it in the way that you are. Okay, you don't necessarily have to focus on the same thing from each article. Um, so for example, you might talk about the results from one article and talk about the methodology in another, but you should include enough information from each study for it to make sense. So you're not just like saying this study found this, this study found this, this study found this. It needs to be a um, kind of narration of what the research says 
and why you're doing this and what you expect to find based on what the research says. Um, so the best way to write the intro is to start very broadly and then narrow down your study um, to addressing the issues at hand. Um, and then um, the last thing you want to do is discuss briefly how you plan to carry out your research. So what are your variables? Um, just very briefly talk about the methodology that, you know, it'll be survey format um, that participants will be um, We'll be completing a survey using a you know five point Likert scale, um, et cetera, um, and then make sure that your introduction is typed and double spaced and includes all insight sorry in text citations, and then upload it as a word document or a PDF to this page. Um, that's about it. I want I want you guys to take some time to read through this on your own. Um, another thing that's a really great way to kind of familiarize yourself with the structure is just read the literature reviews of academic journal articles, and that'll give you a good understanding of what I'm looking for here. Now, keep in mind your introduction will not be as long as you see in academic journal articles um, because this is not a um, you know, a, an academic journal research uh, project, um, but the structure should be the same. You should be um, kind of following the same structure of the way the research is presented and the way your justification is presented and the way you're discussing the methodology that you would use, the way you present your hypothesis and support it. You'll find examples of that in any literature review that you read from an academic journal article. Okay. Um, and then again, if you have any questions, reach out. And again, this is a rough draft, right? You're going to be editing this and revising it. Um, and what gets graded is that final draft of your paper. So don't stress too much um, if you're not 100% positive um, of the format. Um, that being said, um, put a lot of effort into this because you don't want to be stuck with doing major revisions at the end of the semester as well. Okay. Um, okay. So let's jump back to our week nine assignments and due dates. Um, okay. So, um, again, chapter six and seven inquisitive assignments are due Sunday at 1159. And then the other thing that's due Sunday, um, the 21st is this extra credit project evaluation. This is just worth two points of extra credit. Um, your responses will remain anonymous and will not be shared with your group. So this is an individual assignment. This would be submitted individually. Um, I will see you submitting it. I will know who you are, but your group members will not. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to be very honest and very straightforward about how things are going um, with your project. So um, how are things going <laughs> overall? Um, what can I do to help you with your project? Um, is each member of the group contributing fairly according to the guidelines your group set forward in the contract? If not, please be very specific about what is about who is not doing his or her fair share. Um, and if someone is not doing his or her fair share, um, what have you done as a group to address this? Have you taken any initiative to address this? Um, what are some things that you can do to improve your group's functioning? Even if it's going well, there's always room for improvement. Are you happy with how your project is coming along? And then um, do you feel supported? Okay, so again, this is completely anonymous from your group and also an opportunity for you to share with me how you're feeling, how things are going, so that um, I can make sure that I'm doing my due diligence in making sure that you feel supported and you, and you do have the support that I want you to have. Okay, so um, jumping back again, that's not required, that's optional, but you'll get two points of extra credit for that. Um, okay, so... Uh, again, Lab 7 and the intro are not due until um, April 4th. I want to jump back to, I'm just going to take me back to the modules. Yes, it is. Okay. So just really quickly, um, it did not take me back to week nine. Sorry. Um, really quickly, let me get back to week nine. Okay. So um, as you can see, um, these are introduced, but they're not due until 
April 4th. So that's a good three weeks from now, right? We have um, the uh, Inquisitives due and the extra credit due on Sunday. But after that, you've got, you know, solid three weeks. Please don't procrastinate. <laughs> Please um, make use of this time. I'm going to set up more group meetings the week before these are due. Okay. So that's going to be the next time that we meet. But if you need any help, if you need any um, feedback, any clarification on anything as you're working on these, don't hesitate to reach out. You can reach out on your group page. You can reach out in the Q&A, shoot me an email. If you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom, I'm more than happy to do that, or a group Zoom, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, but I will probably um, send out that um, sign-up sheet um, the week before April 4th, okay? So that we can make sure we're meeting at least a couple of days before these are due so we can touch base and um, see how you're all getting along, okay? Uh, because after that, um, that's when we start um, collecting data. Ma! It's going to be great. Okay. All right, guys. Um, that is it for this week. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, I will talk to you all soon. Take care.